once their school <laughs> achieves a 65% vaccination rate or higher. As of August 27, 2021, approximately 28,000 students received the first dose of the Pfizer vaccine. The nation's secondary school population is approximately 247,000. During the week of September 20, an assessment is to be carried out with the Ministry of Health and Wellness to determine a feasible date to begin face-to-face -face instructions. Robian Williams for CVM Live. As the government seeks to begin the new school year... Good afternoon, everyone. Oh my, I know you have been waiting for over an hour. We had some technical difficulties earlier this morning. As old as I am, I'm still learning this technology thing. You know, as old as I am, and some people say, but me not that old. But <laughs> I just, it's a learning process for all of us, online learning, using technology tools and so forth. So I must do apologize for the late start in this, our grade eight virtual orientation. I'm seeing some familiar faces. Yes, the few times I would have seen you online, I'm remembering you all when you were in grade seven, but now you have transitioned into now grade eight. You're transitioning to grade eight and you're supposed to be so happy that you're one year ahead. As I know, some of you probably want to leave front court already, <laughs> but we have to do it in stages. So now I'm going to hand over now to Mr. Anstein, who is your grade eight coordinator, who is ready and waiting to take us to the rest of the program. For those who are not able to be on, we have to stream it live. I would have done some upgrade to the Zoom account to facilitate 500, but unfortunately it's not been activated as yet. So we still have to utilize our YouTube channel. So Mr. Ansign, over to you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Thomas. Um, good afternoon, everyone, parents, teachers, colleagues. Um, I want to take this opportunity to welcome you all to the front court on behalf of the front court family. I do realize that um, you have been waiting quite a long time for this meeting, um, and I want to extend my apologies for the late start. Um, the fact that um, we had a grade seven orientation meeting earlier on, but that got off to a late start because of some technical difficulties. Nevertheless, here we are, and um, I'm glad you could all make it. Um, the Zoom platform has a limit to the number of persons who, um, who can enter. And therefore we've extended the meeting membership numbers to the Ferncourt YouTube channel. So if you can get that information to other persons who are trying to get online, I, I would appreciate it. No, I'm going to be try to, I'm going to try to be as brief as possible because um, I suppose many of you like me don't like long meetings. So we're going to get into it right away. We're going to start with a brief word of prayer. So I'm going to ask you to bow your heads with me while we call on our maker. Let us pray. Eternal Father in heaven, we thank you for this another day. We thank you for your tender mercies and your grace. Father God, we are indeed fortunate to be here this morning, this afternoon, and that you have granted us the privilege to meet in this fashion. We pray, Lord, that you continue to be with us, continue to guide us in whatever we do and whatever we say. These and other mercies we ask in the name of thy son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Now, um, Mr. Thomas is now sharing his screen with you regarding the agenda. Um, we're going to follow it as closely as possible. And like I said before, I like a brief meeting, so I'm going to ask the various presenters to make their presentations as brief as possible. Okay, once again, um, I want to welcome you all to, to our virtual grade eight orientation. Um, we'll be re-welcoming students who were here from grade seven. Um, many of you might be familiar with, with Mr. Ansign. My name is um, Mr. Ansign. Um, many of you, 
students will be familiar with me because I taught you in grade seven, some of you that is, technical drawing. I only hope that this year we'll continue to have a good relationship. It might be a little more difficult because of the online um, <clears throat> uh, modality, but nevertheless, we can try to do the best we can. Now, without going any, um, with, without any further delay, I'm gonna get into the meat of the matter. First of all, I, I do realize from interaction with students and parents that the several um, issues were um, experienced throughout the last academic year. I'm going to be looking at some of them. I'm not gonna go into any great detail because other presenters will be dealing with them as well. So the first thing I want to look at very carefully is the class lists, the classes. Um, or for those of you who are who are not aware, the name of our classes, the classes are named not according to the level of, of um, for want of a better word, brightness of the students. Each class is named using the letter spelling out the word Fern Court. So in this case, for this year, we have 8F, 8E, 8R, 8N, 8C, 8O, and 8U. Now, for the most part, for the most part, the classes you were in in grade seven will move wholesale to grade eight. So they're more or less, in, for, for the most part, the, the remaining in the same classes as last year. However, there will be a few changes, a few minor changes. This is because um, students from the Britonville campus will be joining us on the main campus. So we're gonna to have to do a little juggling to integrate these students into various classes, right? Um, so for the most part, as I said before, your classes will remain the same, just a few minor changes. So one or two students might find themselves in another class. But um, this might only be temporarily, um, because after we, if we're able to get back face to face, we'll be able to do a more comprehensive um, class listing. Now, another issue which um, some parents and students experienced were in regards to the end of term and end of year reports. Now, I got a lot of questions in regards to the exam marks. Now, <clears throat> here's a typical example. You might say that your child, after doing a particular exam, say they got probably about 90% score in that exam, and 90% score in that particular subject area. But yet on your exam, sorry, on your report sheet, you saw the child only getting for exam probably 54%, 54%. This is because of the way we calculate our final exam scores. Um, the, the, the final exam score, is broken down into two parts. Part one is 40% of the course grade. And part two represents 60% of the exam grade. So when the 60 and 40% are added together, you get the full 100%. So therefore, don't be worried that you think when you see the, on the exam um, list, on the exam column in your child's report that you think your child has failed. No, it isn't. That only represents 60% of the exam mark. Um, Mrs. Franklin Bailey, I think we'll be giving a little more detail on that a little later on, right? Um, the next issue will, what I want to look at is the um, subject um, options, subject options. Now, um, on, the, on your timetable, on the chair timetable, you'll see a number of options for some subject areas. Um, in some cases, it's two options. In some cases, it's three options. I'm gonna ask Mrs. McDonald. Mrs. McDonald will be dealing with that a little later on in her presentation. I don't want to get too much into, into that. But anyway, um, ladies and gentlemen, students, I want to take this opportunity to wish you a productive year. And hopefully, hopefully a face-to-face -face year because um, I'm sure many of you want to see your teachers want to be able to interact with your teachers and interact with your fellow students. So with no further ado, I'm going to move on to an address on the next item on the agenda will be an address by the principal.
So um, over to you, Mr. Thomas, and thank you very much, everyone. Thank you, Mr. Einstein, for the welcome and giving the overview of what to expect in year eight. So a lot of work ahead of us as we work together to ensure that we continue to provide quality education despite COVID-19 still with us. All right, so going into this academic year, we're going to look at the plan of action to reposition Frankwood High School as the school of choice here in St. Anne. So we're going to be looking at our theme. So when you were in grade seven, your theme was persistent, resilience, and excellence. You usually say what a pre. Now for the new academic year, we're adding a new dimension to it. How are we going to be re-imaging education through persistence, resilience, and excellence? Now, our vision as a school is to want to empower all stakeholders to achieve his or her maximum potential in an inspiring and engaging environment. We will collaborate with you, our students, our parents, our past students, our well-wishers, so that we can produce well-rounded and qualified lifelong learners to achieve a better and more sustainable future for all. And this is in keeping with the Ministry of Education's mantra, every child can learn. And at front court, we will put the necessary mechanism in place to ensure that every child will learn. So we'll continue to facilitate technology in education and administration. So grade eight students, we are going to continue to use the My School Jamaica platform where you can view your academic performance and your attendance. We're going to still utilize the Google Classroom platform for teaching and learning. And we're currently working on putting additional ICT centers for numeracy and reading. So when you get the chance to come back for face-to-face, -face, you'll be able to see these centers and you will find it on our Oswald Fisher building. And we are going to improve our point of sale. So we're going to revolutionize how we do point of sale at the Cantina Talk Shop to better serve you. Enhance safety and security discipline. So we want to improve the safety protocols for persons who enter or exit the plan. So you have to wear your mask. All those things you still have to be sanitized, wash your hands. But we're in the process of setting up a processing station at the bottom gate where we set up a face recognition terminal. So all persons coming in, we will check your temperature entering the plant. And we'll be using smart ID. See, you realize that you didn't get an ID card last year because we didn't get the chance when COVID come in and persons have to transition to online learning, but we're working to ensure that you get it when you ingrate it. So with that ID card, you'll be able to swipe and we will know that you're on the compound. And we will continue to create partnerships with relevant government agency to carry out drills and other safety requirements here at Fredquart High School. We will continue to pro promote the child-friendly school concept through school positive behavior intervention support. So when you hear from the guidance council, you hear they talk about our core values, step up. So we want to strengthen our incentive programs so when we have wow, wow, where we recognize persons who are actually meeting each of these core values, safe, tolerant, eco-friendly, positive, Ubuntu, professional. 
We continue to have our safety and security ambassador program in the school and our school rules. You will learn about that briefly in upcoming presentations. But we want you to understand parents and students that we have to enforce the school rules, but we will do that also through personal development and form period sessions. And we're going to strengthen our supervision of students on the plant. So in academic performance, we'll continue to offer the alternate pathway to secondary education because all persons don't learn at the same level. So we have to ensure that we strategically place students so that we can offer the necessary intervention, right? So we will have our support coaches. We'll work with our subject teachers to plan effectively for pathway two and three students. Our teacher is going to utilize data, data in terms of student learning styles. Because if they know or the students' learning styles, then they will be able to plan effectively. We'll also be doing mentorship program for our new teachers. And we want our parents, you, our parents, we want you to play a critical role in your child's academic and social development. So I want you to come on when Mr. Anstein call a great PTA. We want you to come on and participate when the guidance counselor do workshops. We want you to come on so you can get more involved in the school because we want you more involved in our school year. And I must say that from this group last year when you were in grade seven, the parents were the one, there's a group of you who actually renovated our staff lounge. So we want your skills, we want your assistant as we continue to position Fernquote as one of the school of choice in St. Anne. There will be planned ongoing professional development sessions for our teachers. So sometimes when you say a message come out, so they'll be in a meeting or a session, it's to help our teachers to meet your needs in terms of when we identify certain weaknesses, we have to plan how we can help you, our parents, and help your students to better cater to your needs. So there will be ongoing professional development sessions, intervention programs. We would have already started in the summer with a summer program, the summer school. There will be other intervention programs throughout the year, especially targeting students in certain subject areas, internal and external level. Well, if for you would be internal exams so that we can get them to improve. We're going to prepare a blended timetable. So Mrs. McDonald will talk to you about the timetable. So there are times in which after we get the go ahead, but before we even reach the stage in our parents and students, we have to get 65% of the school vaccinated. And those who are vaccinated can come to school based on the bulletin I received from the ministry last week. So there are times in which students will come here online and times in which they will be at home, face-to-face -face and online. We're going to improve our technology infrastructure. So soon we're allowed to bring in their laptop or tablet when they come for face-to-face -face school and formulation and introduction of an ICT policy that will guide us in how we infuse ICT in education. We're going to increase ICT in education in our schools and also to increase Wi-Fi access to cover the entire plant and increase the internet bandwidth for the use of fiber optic. Our plant infrastructure, so we'll continue to upgrade the physical and electrical infrastructure. So when you got a chance, parents and students, to come on the plant, you would have seen we're doing a number of renovations to make the plant more child and staff friendly. We have to also improve energy conservation practices in the school. So we're in the process of doing a partnership with the Ministry of Science and Technology to install solar panel here at the school so we can conserve on electricity and our water, right? So, so we already started putting water harvesting. So when water gone in Claremont, we're still able to can have school with water. I want to enforce a school maintenance plan. So students and parents, when you come on the plan, we want you to help us to keep the 
plan clean, make it look good. And you know, say so anything look good, you know, so everything go follow with goodness all this, all the time. So standards of appearance, attractiveness and cleanliness. And we want you students, when you come, you can throw your garbage on the floor. You have to help us to keep the surrounding clean. Cleanliness is near to, next to godliness. All right, we want to improve personal and social development program through sports. So you see there a picture of Abigail Campbell, all right? It's there, she did well. She won her event in the last ISA championship. And we have Derek Grant who came third and we have our relay team that was in the final. We want to improve the sports offerings. I want to also improve music and performing arts through partnerships with your parents past students and business community. We want to develop a sports program to include academics, nutrition, and physical fitness and utilize students' learning styles and preferences to revamp our current clubs and societies in the school. And we will continue to have our different leadership groups, the prefects, the monitor. Well, for you in grade, it will be the monitors and the student council. We want to prepare future workforce that adopt better technologies to be more efficient. So we want to introduce stuff like robotics, digital animation, entrepreneurship. So when you finish here after five years, well, it could be four years, three and six years if on, in our six one program, we want to expose you to different skills that will prepare you for the markets. All right, just skipping through some of these, we want to expand our agriculture science project. So we want to supply additional items, but you too will learn when you go to agriculture science. So you can become entrepreneurs too. And we want to, and we will continue to renovate the canteen and talk shop. Currently we have a jerk area. So sometimes you will get jerk chicken here, right? We recruit the chef and we have staff members with the required customer service and culinary skills to revamp the canteen menu. So we want to create a database. So when we send out information that we want to know your skills, it's important so we can get you to assist us with our programs here at Front Court High School. We also want to have outreach programs. So we want to work with the schools in this constituency South East St. Anne, so we can provide support to our primary school teachers in academic and sports. And we want to strengthen partnerships with external stakeholders or member of parliament, past students and community members, including business, police, and church to strengthen the school programs. We want to continue our marketing strategy. And when you are in grade seven, remember we used to have our events on our YouTube channel, that's something we will continue to do. But in addition to that, we're in the process of developing a school website. So every information you want to know about Friend Court, you just go on the website. And we'll continue to have our social media platform or Instagram and Facebook. How are we going to get there? It's through teamwork, shared vision, communication, capacity building, accountability, and constant review and evaluation. So parents, students of grade eight, things are going through here. Things are going through here at Frankwood High School and we have to continue to keep it up. We, you are all our ambassadors. So I'm looking on the camera, I see persons in their friend court jersey. And so yes, man, you're all ambassadors of friend court because you are part of the brand friend court. You in your uniform, you treat it with respect so that we can continue to reposition friend court as a school of choice. Now, Mrs. McDonald is going to share with you briefly about your timetable. And then we'll talk briefly about assessments. Uh, 
Just hold on for me. Share a screen. So, Miss, you will hear from one of our vice principals, Mrs. McDonald. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. Thank you very much, Mr. Thomas. Thank you. Very All right. Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome back to um, Frankfurt High School after your summer break. Students, parents, how are you? It's good to see you, really good to see you. I would have seen some of you during the summer when you came for face-to-face -face for summer school, yes. And I'm really excited to have you back here with us for your next year at Frankfurt High School. You're, you would have completed one year with us. And I know it was an unusual year, lots of challenges. Hmm? Yes, but guess what? We, we stood this, the test of time and we're back here together. God has been good to us and it's good to see you and it's good to be able to share with you. So without any further ado, I want to walk you through your timetable. I know you're accustomed to what the timetable looks like. You would have seen your grade seven timetable, but now you're moving on to grade eight and some things will remain the same and some things will change a bit, all right? So to start, I want you to remember that there are certain core areas that you're all going to be doing. So all grade eight students will be expected to do some core areas. So you're all going to be doing mathematics, English, integrated science, and social studies. Those are your core areas and that you will do, all right? Okay, there are some other subject areas that you're going to be doing. So if you look on your screen, you're all going to be doing English literature, which you're accustomed to from grade seven, physical education, you're going to be doing music, Spanish, information technology, all right? And remember when you go to your information technology, you have to pay classes, you have to pay keen attention there, you know, because um, students remember last year it was online school. And this year, it's going to be blended, meaning sometimes you're going to have to be online and sometimes you will be here face to face, depending on whether we achieve our 65% target as it relates to vaccination. So you have to learn all the IT skills you can get so that you'll be able to upload your assignments because I know last school year, some of you had challenges, you know, some of you had challenges, some of you, you did the work, but you did not have the necessary skills that was needed to upload the assignments so that your teachers could get them. So I know some of you resorted to all sorts of methods. You were using your phone to take the pictures and WhatsApp it, WhatsApping it to your teachers and stuff like that. You know, yes, man. And you know the teachers are always very accommodative, but at the end of the day, we want to ensure that you learn the correct way of doing this. All right, guys? You're gonna be doing library science, personal development, health and family life education. And remember now, personal development and health and family life education are two critical areas that even though for the most part, they are not examining subjects, right? But they're very important towards your development. And especially in this COVID where things are changing on a daily basis, your teachers need to stay in tune with you, all right? They need to have these sessions with you to help you to cope. These are where you're gonna learn the skills, the life skills that are gonna help you to cope as you move into adulthood, all right? Then there's gonna be music, visual arts, and religious education. So if you notice, I have an asterisk beside this option because students, parents, at no point in time will they be doing all three areas. At no point in time will they be doing all three areas at once. They will do one per term. So for example, in the Christmas term, if they're doing music, 
when we move on to the Easter term, they're not going to do music again enough. They're going to probably do religious education or visual arts. But by the end of the academic year, they would have covered all three areas. Then there's history, geography, and civics. Again, one per term. So they'll maybe start with history, then they move on to civics, then they move on to geography, or whatever the case may be. The r and eras, which are business, industrial technique, agriculture, family and resource. All right, so there are four eras there. However, students and parents, you will not be engaged in all four areas. For the entire academic year, you will only focus on two areas because remember now, you know, and this caused a bit of problem last school year. So I want us to get it right this year. Last school year, you were only supposed to do two areas for the entire year. So let's say you did business and industrial technique in grade seven. Now that you're moving on to grade eight, this is where you're gonna do the agri and the resource and family and resource management, all right? So we are giving you an opportunity to be exposed to all the areas. So all you're gonna be doing is two areas for the academic year. You would have more or less understood the timetable, but just to refresh your memories, I want you to remember that the timetable consists of eight sessions per day, all right? Registration and devotion, that period is between 7.50 and 8.30. It has not changed. It will remain the same. And your first teaching session actually starts at 8.30. So it's the same, basically the same that you're accustomed to. And your break time or your lunch time will be at 10.30. So between 10.30 and 11.10, you will have lunch. And this missile is at 2.30. And remember that your classes will either run for a duration of two sessions which is 40 minutes each or a single session, all right? So your classes are either double or single session. All right, so I'm sharing this with you now, the bell schedule um, between 7.50 and 8.30. That's the period for registration and devotion. And then the first teaching session will start at 8.10 to 9.10. Then you move from 9.10 to 9.50 and 9.50 to 10.30, then you have your lunch time, then you resume after lunch and you follow the schedule right down until dismissal, which is at 2.30. So students and parents, remember now, last year, you were accustomed to going on the assignment page. Not true. You remember the Frankfurt assignment page, FS, FHS assignment page? I'm going to be putting it in the chat for those of you who don't remember it. Or for those of you who did not use to use it, the, the assignment page to access the information, I'm going to put it there for you. So by the end of this week, all right, students, you're going to go onto the assignment page and you're going to see your class list. So you will know exactly which class you're going into. OK, once you identify your name on a particular class list, you're going to pull down the timetable for that particular class. So for example, if you're going to be in 8F, I'm going to expect that you're going to search for the timetable for 8F. All right, guys? So come again. Remember, you must go onto the Ferncourt High School assignment page because we're not going to be posting your names on Facebook and, and so on. We're not going to use the, the other platforms to put up this information. So it means you have to go on the assignment page to find out which class you're going to be in and then you don't know the timetable for that particular class. All right, students. So in a nutshell, that's basically what we're going to be expecting from you. That's basically what your timetable will entail. All right, so do continue to enjoy the rest of the session. And if you have any questions, read the timetable or so on, you can post it in the chat and we will answer them. Okay, thank you. All right, thank you, Mrs. McDonald, for your presentation on understanding your timetable. Yes, I remember some persons were mixed up in terms of the, those do by term and those they do throughout the year, especially resource and technology. So make sure 
where you are placed, you ensure that when the time comes for the rotation, you are in that number. You are in that number because how we're going to set up the system with the report. If grade eight, how many subjects, Mrs. McDonald? Remember and that we will divide everything out here by the number of subjects. If you do 12, it's going to be 12 subjects right across. So there were certain local gaps or weaknesses we picked up with the last report. We're going to correct it for this one because then I'm going to ask the teachers to go in and put in the zeros, which we did for the summer term. So take this as a warning moving into the new academic year. Thank you, Mrs. McDonald. I'm going to show you briefly on assessment. Our exam coordinator did a very good job in putting a video together, which we will use most times to remind you how we do assessments at Frankfurt. Let's hold on, please. Want to make sure you can hear the sound. Assessment, assessment. Assessment is a buzzword in our teachers' classes at Frankfort High School. It is the means by which our teachers evaluate your child's learning to see if concepts taught throughout the month, term, or year have cemented. Here at Frankfort High School, our students are given two pieces of assessment each month, one of which is a formal end of month test and the other an alternate means of assessment, which can be a presentation, a project, class assignment, homework, portfolio, etc. At the end of the term, our students are then given standardized formal examination for each subject. These exams are done in December and June of the academic year. Let us now examine how we arrive at the final subject grade on your child's report card. On the report card, you will see three columns, coursework grade, exam grade, and total grade. Note carefully that the coursework grade represents 40% of your child's final subject grade, and the exam grade represents 60% of the final subject grade. When we add the coursework grade and the exam grade, we will arrive at the total grade for the subject. Let us now look at how we calculate the 40% coursework grade. There are four months in the Christmas term, September, October, November, and December. In December, students complete their end of term examinations. In the month of September through to November, or students complete their coursework pieces. Let's take a look at the table displaying Paul Brown's grades for the Christmas term. Paul would have received homework and end of month tests for the month of September. He would have obtained 80% for the homework and 85% for his end of month test. In October, as his score. Assessment, assessment. Assessment is a buzzword in our teachers' classes at Frankfort High School. It is the means by which our teachers evaluate your child's learning to see if concepts taught throughout the month, term, or year have cemented. Here at Frankfort High School. All right, I'm not seeing the video. I'm not sure what is happening. 
So I'm going to restart it again because I want you to get it right. Assessment, assessment. Assessment is a buzzword in our teachers' classes at Francourt High School. It is the means by which our teachers evaluate your child's learning to see if concepts taught throughout the month, term, or year have cemented. Here at Francourt High School, our students are given two pieces of assessment each month one of which is a formal end-of-month test and the other an alternate means of assessment which can be a presentation, a project, class assignment, homework, portfolio, etc. At the end of the term, our students are then given standardized formal examination for each subject. These exams are done in December and June of the academic year. Let us now examine how we arrive at the final subject grade on your child's report card. On the report card, you will see three columns, coursework grade, exam grade, and total grade. Note carefully that the coursework grade represents 40% of your child's final subject grade, and the exam grade represents 60% of the final subject grade. When we add the coursework grade and the exam grade, we will arrive at the total grade for the subject. Let us now look at how we calculate the 40% coursework grade. There are four months in the Christmas term, September, October, November, and December. In December, students complete their end-of-term examinations. In the month of September through to November, our students complete their coursework pieces. Let's take a look at the table displaying Paul Brown's grades for the Christmas term. Paul would have received homework and end-of-month tests for the month of September. He would have obtained 80% for the homework and 85% for his end of month test. In October, Paul did a presentation and received 100% as his score. He also completed his end of month test and obtained 90%. In November, Paul received a project and obtained a mark of 95%. He sat his end of month test and received 85%. To calculate Paul's total coursework grade for the Christmas term, we would add all the grades he obtained, which are 80% plus 85% plus 100% plus 90% plus 95% and 85%. The total would amount to 535. Now we would have realized that Paul received six pieces of coursework grades for the term. We therefore would want to find what Paul's overall coursework average would be. We would then divide 535 by six. Our answer would be 89%. Therefore, Paul's overall coursework average would be 89%. Remember now, the coursework is 40% of the final grade. Therefore, we would find 40% of 89. So that is 89 multiplied by 40 divided by 100. And our answer would be 35.6. Therefore, Paul's coursework average would be 35.6. So now that we know the coursework grade, we want to calculate Paul's 60% exam grade. Paul sat his exam in December and received a score of 90%. To find the 60% exam weighting, we must now multiply 90 by 60 divide by 100. Our answer is 54. 
Paul's exam grade is 54. The final step is to calculate Paul's total grade for the subject. We must now add the coursework grade of 35.6 to the exam grade of 54. The final subject grade amounts to 89.6. I hope that you now have a better understanding of how to calculate your coursework and your exam grades. I trust that as you go throughout the term this academic year, you will work assiduously to ensure that you complete all course assignments and achieve academic excellence. Thank you for Mrs. Franklin Bailey putting that presentation together. And we'll always have it available on YouTube for you to go back and check because I know you are promoting or uh, in the habit of excellence. We will be having some other presentations, but I just want to in closing that parents and students of grade eight, we can do this despite COVID-19 pandemic, we have to put all our minds and effort together as one. Well. When we have little disputes, let us deal with it internally. We are here to serve you, but at times we don't know what is happening. So you have to reach out to your form teachers and your grade coordinators so that we can assist. Online learning, we had a, a lot of challenges with it last year. So we are at a better, uh, we would have learned a lot. So now we are able to deal with it more effectively moving into this new academic year. But we, it means that we have to get information from you. So when you're having an internet issue, you need to reach out to your subject teacher. You need to reach out to your form teachers and inform them so that they too can put the necessary mechanism in place to help you. But if you don't reach out to us, then we can put the things in place. So I just encouraging you to work with us here at the school so that we can serve you better. So we're now going to have the Dean of Discipline presentation, but Mr. Anderson, our Vice Principal of Administration will do the presentation on her behalf. Good afternoon, grade eight students. All right, let me take off the mask because some of you might not know me. As was said, I'm Mr. Anderson, Vice Principal for Administration. Uh, Mr. Ansign and his um, teachers, good afternoon. Other teachers on the platform and on YouTube, good afternoon. Parents and students, on the platform and on YouTube, 
Good afternoon. Welcome back to school after a long summer break. It's been a long time, but we are back and learning is at the forefront of our journey. So as was said, I'm Mr. Anderson, uh, Mrs. Howell, your Dean of Discipline, as other arrangements. So I'll be conducting a presentation on her behalf. Okay, so our core values step up. And as was said, I am doing this presentation for the Dean of Discipline. All right, so step up. Anybody remember what the letters represent? Can you type it in the chat? What does the S mean? Nobody yet, still waiting in the chat, right? Lakeisha, right? And that Nathaniel Williams, Kimanda. Okay, let's keep it going, let's keep it going. What does, what does the T mean? Serena, Jamila, yes. All right, Kimanda, Jadian, Nathaniel, thank you. All right, keep it going. E, eco friendly, eco friendly, Kalia, Jaden, oh, all right. Uh, Jamila, Michaela, oh, somebody sent practically all of them in the chat, all right? You're cheating. All right. So, Thank you all so much. That person started cut the, 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 the wall, um, that little segment there short. All right, so we're gonna be moving on. Thank you so much for your participa participation, guys. All right. Not just reopening, a new beginning, right? That's what she has there. So let's move on to our next slide. Okay, so mindset change. All right, guys, we, we know that we are currently having a pandemic, right? And this leads us now to be thinking way outside the box, way outside the box. So we need to be smarter and calmer. We're going to be thinking more and we're going to be well, in some cases, talk less because now because we're thinking smarter and we are a lot calmer, we're going to have a lot more of what makes sense coming out of our mouths, right? COVID has put a damper on all activities, all activities, but it has allowed us the opportunity to be thinking outside the box and coming up with new innovative ways of both communicating because way before this, we, I'm sure a lot of persons didn't know anything about Zoom. We knew about um, WhatsApp, but we, we would know about and also Facebook where we could communicate via Facebook as well and other um, platforms that were there. Okay. However, we did not know about Zoom and other platforms. One second, please, let me plug this in. All right, apologies for that, the battery was dying. All right, so, no, as was said, we're going to be after, uh, we're going to have to think smarter. We're going to be calmer, especially as adults. It's now going to be how we respond, right? And colleagues, and uh, students, and parents, we now have to respond in a positive way, right? We have to be positive, cut out the negativity, and we are in a particular situation, and now we have to see how best we can deal with the situation 
and get ourselves out of it, right, as soon as possible. Our behavior is, is responsible for the environment we create. Now, if you create a negative environment from you having a negative behavior, then the persons around you are going to react in a negative way, right? Your children are going to react in a negative way. Friends and other colleagues are going to do the same. So let us surround ourselves with positive people. Let us behave positively, and we should have positive outcomes. I am going to be, I won't go through all the slides um, word for word, but because of the time constraint, but please bear with me. One second, let me try next slide. Okay, it's working now. What needs to happen? Put people first, create spaces that work, solve problems or issues in phases because there's no easy way to solve, well, some problems. Get ready for the future. This is something that you are all doing now because we are here and we are putting plans in place for our children's future, for our future as well. All right. It's been 18 months, believe it or not, colleagues and students, it's been 18 months. Face-to-face -face engagement will only be possible if our students are vaccinated. Again, colleagues and students, we are promoting vaccination, right? It will only be possible for us to, to resume face-to-face -face if we have up to 65% of our students vaccinated. And I am sure we all want to get back on, um, in face-to-face, -face, right, where we can socialize with each other in, well, I wouldn't even say close because I, we're going to know socialize in different ways because I'm sure even after we're vaccinated, we're still going to have to wear a mask and we're still going to have to keep our distance. However, now we will be able to see each other uh, personally, right? And not only via this um, online platform. We spoke about our core values as well uh, uh, before, and you all got them right. So I'm not gonna prolong on this one. Now students, if and when, and parents as well, and teachers, staff members, if and when you come back to school, we're all going to have to go through a screen, screening process, right? We're going to have to go through checkpoints. So all persons are required to wear a mask when entering the school compound. Masks must properly cover nose and mouth. I notice a lot of persons when they wear their mask, they wear their mask under their chin like this. That's not, that's not safe or they wear it just a little bit above and below the nose. 
no, the correct way, colleagues and students, is to wear it above the nose, right? So all persons are required to keep on their mask on until they safely occupy a space that allows for required physical distancing, minimum of four feet apart. Upon entry, all persons will be subject to a temp temperature check by a des designated personnel, or we have something new that you will all see when you come here, where you're going to have to be, your temperature will be checked by a machine. Immediately upon having their temperature checks, temperature taken, all persons must wash their hands because we're going to have hand washing stations at specific areas. We already have some, but we are going to be having more at the entry points. You're going to maintain physical distance in lines and outside of classroom settings. So even during lunch period, um, students, you're going to have to maintain your well, the minimum four feet apart, but I would say six feet apart. And you're gonna also have to wear your mask continuously. Persons who are ill, you should stay home. That's a requirement. We wouldn't want anything bad to happen to anybody. So if you, are, if you know you have a particular illness or underlining issues, I would recommend that you stay home. Practice physical distancing at least six feet. Refrain from hugging, kissing, shaking hands, and touching. Practice good respiratory etiquette by covering mouth and nose. We went through that already. Thoroughly sanitize hands with an alcohol-based hand rub. Wash them with soap and water. Students or staff members found ill on campus will be placed in a temporary holding area and contact will be made to the health department. All suspected cases of COVID-19 will be reported via telephone to the Ministry of Health and Wellness and Parish Department. However, as was said before, we, if there's an outbreak, if there's a case, where we have a suspected person having the, the virus, meaning that you are showing signs and symptoms because we're not physicians. We will not tell you that that's what you have. But once you're showing signs and symptoms, we are going to be placing you in a quarantine area, right? Until the health um, personnel um, come, right? So please, if that's the case, please cooperate because it is, beneficial for us all. We are trying to ensure that we reduce the spread of this virus as best as possible. For students, not just for students, but for all, at all times, protect yourselves, right? Do the necessary, um, and I know it should be habitual things where you wash your hands and you sanitize as regularly as possible. So we're not gonna share cups and we're gonna, not gonna share you eating utensils and food, stuff like that. So now we're going to be even more independent than before. I'm going to go through all of this. Now we have preached over, over the, the, the past few months of everybody being a leader and taking responsibility for their action. Right? We have to protect each other. We have to protect ourselves. And the best way to do so is by wearing our mask, sanitizing as often as possible, and washing our hands. Right? The same goes for visitors. Right? Parents, we know that you, you sometimes want to visit the school. We usually have or policy, but no, we have to stop that. No, you're going to have to bear with us and understand that because it's a phased, it's going to be phased. If we're going to have any reopening, we will not take everybody. It means that parents, you won't be able to visit as often as you would want, and every visit will have to be scheduled. So please bear with us. Please, when you come, 
We're asking that you behave in a mannerable way so that we don't have to have any altercation whatsoever. We would not want to have to call the, the police to come and take anybody off the compound. So I'm asking that you will please cooperate and be as civil as possible. At the gate, it is expected that all visitors will state their purpose and their, of their visit, right? So when you're asked various questions at the gate, when you're, you're having your temperature checked, please behave in a civil manner. And you have to show photograph, identification, and so forth. This is not the first time for some of you, so it should be um, very understandable. All right, so by now, we should all know Yes, sorry about that. By now, we should all know, as I said in the previous slide, you will all be screened. Everybody entering will be screened. Kind of note that upon your entry, you may be subject to further medical screening if you are displaying symptoms or, illness, or any illnesses. Persons, be, persons will be denied entry to the compound are asked to leave the compound if there is, or if they refuse to adhere to the protocols. So as I was saying before, please adhere to. All right. Now, you can take down this bit of information, um, students and parents, where these are the contact information for the bus drivers, their names and the route that they will be um, transporting students to and from. So please, we're gonna, we're gonna post this information. This information, this information will also be posted on the Fern Court website, so you will be able to access it from there as well. Okay, so um, I am now going to hand over to Mr. Ansan because I do not want to prolong any longer. We're going to be, we would go through the, the virtual classroom um, rules and engagement, but most of you, <clears throat> excuse me, most of you would have already been online. So these things would have been given to you and told to you on a daily basis, right? So that's the end of my presentation. Thank you very much, Mr. Ansign, or over to Mr. Thomas now. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Anderson. Um, I, I want to thank everyone for, for being here this afternoon. Um, I don't think there's any more information. Well, if you do need some more, any more information, you can always go on to the Frank Court assignment page. That will give you information regarding your timetables, your class list, etc. Any other info, further information which is not posted, you'll be informed of this in time via the various um, media. And um, we hope that um, we soon will be able to get back face to face. Now, like what was already stated, um, it is important that the, as many children as possible, minimum 65% of the school population get their vaccines this is the only way we're going to be able to begin face-to-face -face, um, interaction. I know that many students want to come back to school face-to-face. -face. I also know that many parents want to get their children out of their house to get back to school. So it's all going to depend on you parents and students to get vaccinated as soon as possible so that we might be able to get back face-to-face. -face. 
I want to take this opportunity to thank you all not only for coming and I want to wish you all a productive um, school term. One thing, Mr. Einstein, one, one moment Mr. before it ends. Yeah. All right. So, yes, in terms of the vaccination, we have to get at least 65% of our school population vaccinated. We here at Friendable High School, we are willing to set up a vaccination blitz here, but we have to get the numbers. And we know already that the online learning didn't work so good last academic year. So I think we need to utilize this opportunity. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to ask you to go to our assignment page. There's a link there for you to complete our COVID-19 survey. We want you to complete it. The office staff will communicate with you by tomorrow or Wednesday, because they have started doing grade 11 and grade 10. So we're moving down. We want your parents to give us their full support. We cannot continue to the strictly of our online learning. We have to use some blended approach. And in order for us to have the face-to-face, -face, we have to get a certain amount of you to be vaccinated. And only based on the bulletin I got last week, it's only vaccinated students will be allowed on the compound. All right, so I want you to get that very clear. Only vaccinated students can come to school for face-to-face -face classes. So I want you to take this very serious. There, we want you to work with us, get vaccinated so we can get back to face-to-face -to -face classes. Starting next week, we'll resume with online learning. Then we wait on directives from the ministry to see when we start face-to-face but in the meantime, we want you to get vaccinated. We are ready to set up a blitz here at Frankfurt High School, but we must get a certain amount of students to come. And parents, you are invited to come and get your vaccine to you. So it's not only for the students alone. You are able to also to come and get the vaccine. Sam, Sam, back over to you, sir. Okay, um, just to give you an idea of, of numbers, we have approximately, well, almost 1,500 students at the school. So in order to get a minimum of 65%, we're looking at over 900 students. We're looking at about 950 students need to get vaccinated in order for us to open online. So bear that in mind, um, students, bear that in mind. Face to face. Parents, yes, if you need to face to face. Um, so um, please take care of yourselves. Keep safe. And I wish you all a pleasant good afternoon and a great productive um, academic year. Take care of yourselves. Bye-bye for now.